Hey guys, Melvin here, and I wanted to try something new with the channel. So what we have here is a type of recap of some interesting events that occurred over the course of January. Whether it be something paranormal or political, if it's interesting, we're gonna yap about it for a little bit. So with that said, let's get into it. Earlier in January, Unexplained Possibilities did a podcast with special guest Niema, the Third Eyed Mystic. We went over psychedelics and philosophy. I learned quite a bit from speaking with her, and I encourage all who have an interest in psychedelics to give it a listen. We also put out a short type of outtakes video, which showcases my ability to butcher names specifically Niemas, which admittedly, I did practice saying about 50 times before the recording right now. Also in January, we put out a top 10, which was a countdown of US states with the most UFO sightings. If you're curious to know if your state made the list, give it a watch. I want to mention our show with guests Chella and Nopsy from Create Disclosure, now, even though this was the last show in 2016, so it happened in December, not January, I forgot to mention that they have a GoFundMe page set up. So they're asking people to help, of course, fund projects. Now, this is what they're going to do with the funds. They will create a website, become an LLC, get equipment to start their own podcast, host workshops, host special events, advertise, and create opportunities and jobs for Create Disclosure team members. So really cool stuff. Now normally I wouldn't mention something like this, but after speaking with Chella, I know 100% she and her team are sincere in what they are attempting to do. And like most in the field, they're not rich. Hence why they're asking for help and funding. So if you want to know more of what Create Disclosure is about, be sure to check out our podcast with Chella and Nopsy and also their social media pages. Those links can be found below in the description box. In January, we also saw two major things happen by government in relation to UFOs and extraterrestrial life. The first is a video released by the Chilean government which shows a UFO appearing to spray something into the atmosphere. Now, this originally happened back in 2014. Why the Chilean government decided to release this footage now is a mystery, but it gives a little bit more credence to there being extraterrestrial life and they're visiting this planet. Or it could just be government experimentation. We really don't know, but hopefully one day we'll find out. The second government release comes from the Central Intelligence Agency. Yes, the United States actually released documents pertaining to UFOs and extraterrestrial lives, along with a bunch of other stuff. And the kicker is, there's no weather balloon or swamp gas in sight in, this, in these reports. The documents that were published are nearly 13 million pages worth of information. Information on alien sightings, activities done during the Korean War, Vietnam War, the Cold War. That's nothing compared to what I consider most interesting. And that's a program known as Stargate and investigating possible psychic abilities and what could be done with them. Famed magician and self-proclaimed psychic Uri Geller claims to have been involved with the CIA and its investigations of psychic ability. The fact that these documents are mentioning investigation of psychic abilities give more credence to the MK Ultra program being real. If you don't know what the MK Ultra program is, don't worry, Unexplained Possibilities is going to have your back on this because in the future we will be talking about it, so stay tuned for that. Now, thanks to a lot of nagging and the Freedom of Information Act, the records can be seen by everyone. So if you're going to dig in them and find anything interesting, be sure to let us know. Now this one is small and it didn't make any type of national news, but it's still interesting nonetheless. 
Towards the closing days of January, a video popped up showing UFOs over Tijuana. In total, there were seven lights dancing over the border of the United States and Mexico. Perhaps this was their protest over the possible wall between the US and Mexico? With that said, I believe it's time to talk about the biggest story of January 2017, and that is Donald Trump. Donald Trump became the United States 45th president, and along with him came the controversy. During Trump's inauguration, there were protests happening for him not to become president. Also, putting a cloud overhead was the election result showing Trump lost the popular vote but won the electoral. Trump's response about there being 3 million illegal voters didn't help matters either. Another issue was Sean Spicer mischaracterizing the size of the inauguration crowds. This led to Trump advisor Kellyanne Conway to say that the administration was supplying the media with alternative facts. Alternative facts quickly became a meme with people giving examples of their own alternative facts, such as cigarettes are good for you and water isn't what. While most are playing around with alternative facts, some people have pointed out similarities to George Orwell's 1984. The day after Trump's inauguration was the Women's March. Millions of people from different backgrounds of life and even countries took part in this protest. Trump used presidential executive powers to further his plan of making America great again. Two of these executive orders seem to have angered a fair share of Americans. The first is the travel ban, which is estimated to affect 90,000 people including residents, green card holders, visa holders, and refugees. This sparked massive outrage and protest, and questions if this was constitutional. One of the ongoing arguments is that the seven countries the ban was placed on was created by the Obama administration. These countries are Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Somalia, Libya, Sudan, and Iran. The issue is under the Obama administration, no ban was ever put into place and the countries were considered countries of interest with ties to terrorists. However, one could argue that the Obama administration did ban refugees from Iraq for six months. As a matter of fact, this is the argument that the Trump administration is using. While that seems to be the case, it isn't. First, refugees don't come into the country on visas, so it's no way Obama could have banned visas for refugees. The Trump administration is stopping people with visas as well as refugees. The other thing to take into account is that refugees never stopped coming to the United States from Iraq. It was a massive slowdown on the influx of refugees in response to specific threat information which led to the arrest of two Iraqi refugees. This also had the effect of leading to the administration changing the screening procedures and thus slowing down refugees entering the country. The other issue Trump faces with the travel ban is that it appears to be a conflict of interest. Countries with a higher terror ranking like Saudi Arabia isn't banned. Some are starting to speculate it's because he has businesses in those countries. The other major executive order decision Trump made, which put people up in arms, was the Keystone Pipeline and the Dakota Access Pipeline's revival. The Dakota Access Pipeline in general was hard fought by protests for months on end. And this is something the people did not want, not to mention it would run through native land the U.S. government has treaties with. They should not be able to take that land from those people, but it appears that they are doing this. One argument is that this will create jobs, but what they fail to say is that it would be temporary jobs and the harm to the water and environment could be long-lasting. 
Now, Trump could have used this to his advantage by saying no to the pipeline definitively and just crossing it off the board where they can't do jack squat and could have helped the country move on to renewable energy. That would have been a huge step for him as well as this country and it also would have changed people's opinions on him at the present. One of the reasons Trump might be doing this is because he has stock in the parent companies of the pipeline. It was reported earlier in 2016 Trump dumped his stocks, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Trump's 2016 federal disclosure shows that he owns between $15,000 and $50,000 in energy transfer partners, the owners of the pipeline and he has between $500,000 and $1 million invested in Philip 66 who owns 25% of the pipeline. This is clearly a conflict of interest. With all that said, Trump is doing something he said he would do. That is uniting people. As weird as it seems, people are starting to come together, albeit in protests, and stand up for one another, I never thought I would see millions of people join together in protests and become one voice across the entire United States. It's something special, and I'm quite sure people are now more suspicious of government, and they're keeping their eyes on government officials now instead of looking the other way. So yes, Trump is uniting people just not possibly in the way he thought or who knows maybe this is all part of his plan but here's a serious question i want you to ask yourselves would this have happened under hillary would people be uniting like this and quite literally forgetting their differences and joining together in mass quantities like this in my lifetime I've never seen something like this, so would this have happened under Hillary? Probably not. It would probably be more of the same. So while I'm sure many people don't agree with what Trump is doing, I will give him credit on actually starting to unite people, maybe for the wrong reasons, but with the right intentions. Or is it the right intentions for the wrong reasons? That's one that someone else will have to figure out. One thing's for sure though, if all of this happened in the first week of Trump being in office, then what's going to happen over the course of the year, let alone four? With that said, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you at the end of next month for February's recap.